This episode of PTG is brought to you by HK Army. HK is an industry leader in high quality paintball gear, accessories, and lifestyle apparel that was founded in 2007. And we have a tremendous opportunity for you all to be geared up on every level with HK Army custom team gear. Whether you're on the paintball field or in the airsoft arena, take your game to the next level by using code PTG to get 50% off your custom gear design fee. And I don't think y'all heard me out there. That is 50% off and you will be able to collaborate with a seasoned designer to create custom branded HK Army jerseys, long sleeves, t-shirts, pants, gloves, or headbands for your team with no minimum order quantity. Head on over to hkarmy.com slash custom and use code PTG for 50% off on your team's custom gear design fee right now. Let's go. Thank you, HK Army, for everything you do in paintball, in airsoft, and in so many people's lives. We love you. Go check them out. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. Today's episode of PTG is brought to you by the one and only Trans Labs that brought the world two amazing products. First off, Transfuse, which is a hydration multiplier, and most recently, they just dropped Transcend, which is a nootropic energy formula. No matter what you use, when you choose Trans Labs, you are going to be boosted and you are going to be ready to charge the paintball field and win out there. With Transfuse, that is a premium rapid hydration multiplier and immunity fortifying formula scientifically designed to replenish you at the cellular level. And they use all natural ingredients in this product. We've got zinc, we've got vitamin B6, we've got vitamin C, sodium, potassium, choline, and it is an amazing way to make sure that you're hydrated and prepared to play top level paintball. When it comes to Transcend, that is a premium nootropic energy formula designed to increase cognitive performance, elevate mood and clarity while supporting long-term brain health, and it's gonna leave you feeling great with no crash or jitters. It's one of the only products in the nootropic space backed by research studies to ensure the formula is correct for optimal performance. It is more potent than anything on the market and it will keep you charged and ready to win out there. I take one scoop, but if you're stimulant sensitive, take a half scoop, and if you want that LFG dose to launch to the moon, Dump two scoops in your drink and you are going to be flying down that paintball field. Comes in two delicious flavors, Baja Blast and Skittles Candy for the Transcend. And for the Transfuse, they have two new flavors as well, Pineapple Express and Hawaiian Punched. So if you get a chance, head over to translabs.com. That's T-R-A-N-Z-L-A-B-S.com. Use code PLAYTHEGAME and you'll get 10% off. If you subscribe to a monthly delivery service, you also get 10% off as well. So you can take advantage of 20% off on these products. Head over to translabs.com and give it a go. This episode is brought to you by BioCell RX. BioCell RX is an amazing company that makes some of the best CBD I have ever tried. I've been personally using this product for over three months and it does not disappoint. I don't go anywhere without it. When traveling, it's really hard to get to sleep, especially when I'm swapping time zones and going to different places, sleeping in hotels and not in my own bed. CBD helps me get a good night rest so that I can wake up feeling refreshed, ready to coach, ready to teach, or ready to compete. Whatever it is, I take my CBD with me. My CBD is my partner in crime, my partner in travel. BioCell is one of the products that if it's not in my backpack, I'm not leaving the house. You guys are definitely going to want to head over to BioCellRx.com and pick up a bottle of your own. The cool thing about BioCell is they offer CBD at an incredibly highly concentrated formula. With over 6,000 milligrams per bottle, you can get one bottle 
and hold on to it for a long time. The typical dose for CBD is around 30 milligrams, so you do the math. Uh, one bottle will last you a very long time. You don't have to deal with constantly ordering new products and you know waiting for it to arrive and maybe running out, all of the nonsense. Use code PLAYTHEGAME and get $25 off at checkout. All right, everybody. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This episode, we have a lot of quality content for you guys. We have Colt Lukow from PB Fit on to talk about their recent uh, win and current rival against Blast Camp. Now, the first two events of the season have been absolutely insane in the semi-pro division. PB Fit has played Blast Camp in the finals at both events, and PB Fit has come out on top. Now, last year, Blast Camp was leading uh, the way pretty much the entire season in first place, and Austin Notorious came through at the very end at World Cup and stole the pro spot. So there is a massive battle brewing right now to see what semi-pro team is going to take the number one spot and get promoted to the pro division. And getting Colt on the show to talk about uh, really just all of their preparation, what goes into um, having a, a successful divisional team, and a little bit about the rivalry. It's definitely one you're not going to want to miss. Then we get a great surprise call from Dalton Vanderbilt. Uh, obviously, Dalton is one of the best to ever do it. He's dealing with a little bit of an injury, so he shares insight onto into uh, his injury, impact, and the last event. This is just another one you don't want to miss. Um, and it's a absolute banger. So without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. What's going on, everybody? We have none other than Colt Lucal from PB Fit, who's on an absolute tear yeah. right now. You guys have won the first two events of the season. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on in semi-pro paintball right now, uh, and we're incredibly excited to have you. So what's happening, brother? Nothing much, man. Just getting after it and chasing the dream. That's pretty much uh, our whole goal. There we go, Colt. Love Hell that. yeah, chasing the dream, dude, which is? Which is to go pro and mm -hmm. try to be at the top of the pro league. That's, uh, that's the main goal. Love that. I love man. it, dude. Yeah, you guys definitely have the team, the organization, the backing, the field uh, to make that happen. You know, there's a lot that goes into having a successful organization. It's really difficult. As you know, you guys have worked your way up through the ranks. Um, and it's um, it's hard to keep everything together. So the fact that you guys have kept this group together uh, the way that you have is uh, really telling of the culture. Um, Semi-pro paintball right now, I think, is more exciting than it's ever been. I'm, you know, fully invested. I was in the the pits. You know, my D2 team was playing at the same time as you guys, Wrecking Crew. They were in the same block. So I got to watch that whole match. And then at the last event, I was also uh, in the pit watching that finals match too. And just seeing, you know, you guys battle back and forth. I'm like, this is a story that I wanted to, you know, have on PTG, want to tell the story because it's exciting. Um, and I think it's really cool and important for people to realize that there's a whole new wave of players and teams that are, you know, coming to take our spot. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a weird thing. Cause like the rivalry, you get mixed feelings on it. I feel like, like some people kind of like, they think I'm like a dick like a, like a prick about it, but like you watch any other sport, all like the, the top dogs in a sense, right? Like you look at, uh, like Kobe and Jordan, like they weren't nice to their competition. No, you know what I mean? Like we're competing. It's a sport. Yeah. Like, so when I'm out there, like, I'm not thinking about, I need to be friends with this guy. I'm like, I want to fuck you up and I, I want to be better than you. So like naturally you kind of be a dick to people, but at least well, that's my opinion if you want it. I, I don't think that, everybody thinks you're dick obviously your teammates think that you're an amazing person and and it's kind of like we had riley sullivan on i'm not sure if you saw we just dropped that episode with riley and he was saying some similar things uh you really mm -hmm. you got to tap in on that show and listen to that because riley was saying some very similar things on the previous episode about how when he was a young pro um you know and you're on your way there he was viewed as this as this asshole that that nobody liked but if you were on his team like i was he was my favorite teammate he's the one that went to bat you know what i mean and he had the passion he had the fire and you have that colt so don't ever you know let any of the the outside noise um distract you from the mission obviously in the same breath you want to make sure that you let you know obviously people know it's sport when you're in the net it's on it's it's game on you know what i mean 
And then outside the net, whatever we can, you know, we can be cordial or maybe not. It can be that way too, um, depending on how you want to set the tone and what you guys are trying to accomplish. Because, you know, once again, this is sport and sport is war. And, you know, when it comes down to it, it's us versus you. And and 100%. we want to win, you know, we want to take you off and make sure that we're on top. So there's a lot of crazy energy that goes into the sport, but you just keep being you, man, because you're extremely fun to watch. And we love seeing you and all the PV Fit crew going ham. And obviously all the semi-pro teams going ham, having fun, playing good ball. Man, I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. That means a lot. Keep it up, dude. Yeah. And, you know, something that I like that Riley was, was, um, <clears throat> you know, talking about was actually how soft sports in general have gotten, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's true. It really is like, for whatever reason, it's like athletes want to be best friends with every other player in the league and go help other players and, you know, share notes like what? And that's, that's, that's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. You know, uh, it's not how we grew up. You know, I, I don't know how, you know, it was where uh, you grew up playing paintball. But for us, it was like very much, you know, your team is your tribe. And uh, when you show up to the event, like maybe you say hi to people on on Thursday, maybe. But it's like you are just locked in with your group and that's it. You know, that's it. Period. You're there to win. Um, you're, you're there you're to, there to win. Exactly. Right? Everything like, else is a distraction. Yeah, 100 percent. And I feel like that's how sports should be. And I think yeah. the the people that lose track of that are the people that aren't winning, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like they're totally just OK agree. with just being a part of the groups of the high level players. But they're not they're not trying to be the best. They just want to be like, oh, I'm friends with that guy. Yeah, like totally. I, at least that's what I see like in paintball a lot is I mean, you see it in semi pro too. like a lot of different people are are super friendly with people outside the net. Like I'm I'm super nice. Like. I mean, we'll just talk about it now. Like with the Blast Camp guys, like I, I respect a lot of those guys, a lot of them, right? But there's there's a certain player that has never shown me respect, so I stopped trying to show him respect. And now, I mean, it's like me and Jackson don't like each other. Right? Okay, yeah, let's dive right into this because I saw a clip. It was one of the reasons I wanted you on the show because, again, this rivalry, again, I've been in the pits. I've been seeing these games. They're close. They're gritty. Yep. Uh, and then after the last event, it looked like as you guys were shaking hands, you like said something to him and everything was fine. And then you walked away and it looked like you like hugged your teammate. And then he said something and then you turned around and were like, I'll say it to your face. You know, like what, you, what was said? Can you walk us through what happened there? Cause it seemed really strange. You know, it seemed like, no, abs absolutely. So, yeah. so like going into that match, I was like, you know, I was, I was kind of like, we won the first match and I was kind of a dick. So like I'm not I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna be real respectful. Well, real real quick, the first match in Orlando. Yes, in Orlando. Okay, so it, how are you a dick? Let's talk about that. Uh, okay. So mind. let me give you some <laughs> backstory on that. So yeah, Sacramento, we're playing a minor event, and Mark okay. Johnson, a real good friend of ours, he's like, hey, I don't have a team. Diesel's not playing uh, the minor. Would you guys be okay if I played with you guys and like I'll help cover like Airbnb? And it's like, well, that's a no-brainer. Like, Sick, yeah, yeah, let's absolutely come play with us, dude. Um, we end up beating Blast Camp in the prelims, and Jackson starts running his mouth, right? And then like he's like talking about pro assistance and and whatnot, and like overshooting me on one of the points that they were coming down because they're trying to like run up the score uh, in the last bit of the match, and he's like shoots the shit out of me, and I was just like, hey, like keep that same energy tomorrow because we were playing them Sunday. Like this was Saturday. We play them Sunday. Sure. And he was like yeah. acting like I was being a jerk to him for saying, keep that same energy. But I'm like, if you're going to overshoot me, like that's cool. I'm fine with that. But like, don't be mad when I do it to you. So I told <laughs> yeah, him like, keep fair. the same energy. Then fast forward to the next point, our next match, we beat him again. And he just starts mouthing off again. It's always him. His teammates are very respectful. It's just, him towards us at least i don't know what he's like with other teams uh usually and then he's like just talking non-stop to mark about how he's old and like what did you do that match mark like and then then yelling at okay. me when i come up and i'm like hey like chill out like it's whatever and then he's like at least i don't need pro assistance to win and i was just like what do you mean like we just beat you other like on the first tournament we beat you and we mercyed you guys then throughout the year, you've only beat us one out of like most of the matches we have played them last year. We beat them every match. They beat us in a couple matches. We beat them more. But I don't bring that up because it doesn't matter. Right. It really comes down to who wins the event. Right. So then sure. he's like talking yeah. nonstop about pro assistance. So then now fast forward to the next time 
we play them in the finals because we've never played them in the finals. We played each other in semis and right, like quarters. Right. Um, we beat them in finals. So then that was just the first thing Orlando. that came out of my body was like, all right, pro assistance, right? Because we have the same. We actually lost two players from last year and picked up two D three players. They picked up two pro players. I mean, one was Zach, so like that was already a blast camp player. He was so already really their guy. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. They picked up one pro, right? Who's so like, the other? Who's the other pro? They picked up Rob Velez. Oh my God, Rob That's plays right. with them. Yeah, yeah. no, That's and right. he actually, Dude, I totally he actually took about Jackson's uh, starting spot at the event. Um, oh, geez. <laughs> which is funny to me. Um, but yeah, so he, <laughs> he, they got pro assistance. Um, so then, yeah, of course I'm going to bring that up. Cause like you were talking shit to me about <clears throat> us having a guy come play with us for one, a minor, right. You pick up a pro and then, yeah, I'm going to say some shit when we beat you, when in the off season, you picked up a pro, we picked up a D three kid. Like, so is we, that what he you. said? Uh, like what was said after the end of the, yeah, so I was, was there. The first- this okay, was this was the event? first event. This is the first oh, okay. event. So the second event, um, I come up and I'm like, hey, popcorn at. everything I've said before, <laughs> like I was just like, hey, man, because uh, I say a lot of like fuck yous um, before matches. And they had comment, commented on it uh, to my coach kind of saying like they find it disrespectful. Um, what do you mean them. you say a lot of what do you what do you mean? <sighs> so I, I, I tell my teammates because like I think when you're going into a match, you should have the mentality of fuck the other team. Okay. Like it's us versus them. We put in okay. more work. Let's let's grind, okay. right? So yeah, I kind of reiterate some things like that. Um, to your team, to only to, to my team. team, to my okay. team in the yeah. huddle. Like I'm talking. But like, then they see it on video, and and it it yeah. gets personal. Okay. Got yeah. It. And then uh, so then after the match, it's like, hey, everything. It's not personal towards you guys. Like I just wanted to let them know, like it's just me trying to get my guys hyped. It's what I said. I said I just try to get my guys hyped for matches. And he goes, it's cool. I get it. So then I'm like, cool, this is squashed. Like, let bygones be bygones. And as I'm walking away, then he decides to say, say it to my fucking face. So then I was just like, wait, what? So then I turned around and got in his face because that's what he asked for. And then again, he tries to play off like I'm being a dick to him. But I'm like, dude, like I tried apologizing and then you were a dick to me. So I'm not going to be like, as a man, you tell me to say something to your face. I'm going to get in your face. That's Dude, just it's just how that's supposed it's to be. It's getting crazy. <laughs> I love it. You know what? You know what I'll, I'll bet is you two are more alike each other than you even know. You know what I mean? As competitors, you guys are probably like mirror images as competitors. And like if you guys were on the same team, it would be hype. But because you guys are going against each other, it's like this perfect storm where, you know, it's this huge rivalry. And and the games have been phenomenal. The the play mm-hmm. has been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And you can They're see phenomenal you guys. Team. Dude, you guys have all been playing with with a different gear and a different level of passion, and it shows in the in the play style. Yeah, no, I I, I completely agree. I mean, like, and it's a it's a weird thing because you'll see us like, you'll see both teams conversating together, smiling, everyone's happy. There's just always two players that aren't involved in that, and it's me and him. <laughs> so like, he's never talking to my team. I'm never talking to his team, and we do not talk to each other. I honestly, I think it all stemmed from like. Every match I've played against the kid, he has overshot me. I'm not a fan of overshooting people when they're walking off the field. Mm -hmm. If you want to bunker me and put seven in me, I get it. Yeah, let's do it. But don't shoot me literally in the dick while I'm walking off the field and nod at me, which is what he did, by the way, in the finals. (laughs) Like, that's why I'm like, no, like there's levels to overshooting. And like, that's why I started having an issue with him because he always did that to me. And then he... Then he chirped, and then I was just like, "Now I'm done being nice." So I, I feel like he we got asked we got action. Big. We got action. I we do want to tie though, because I've I've definitely had players like that in the league. That it's like never even knew really why we didn't get along, other than we're kind of we're uh, so similar, yeah. right? And and doing like similar things on our respective teams. That there's just this inherent competition that mm-hmm. you know you you want to hate the person. You know, it's kind of an interesting dynamic for sure. No, and, and, and like, yeah, we like we don't like each other, but like I still respect him as a player, right? Like a, as a player, I know he's good, right? You have to respect him. If you don't respect him, that's why you get that's how you get shot, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I have a, I have such a huge amount of respect for that team. Absolutely. I just don't respect totally. his attitude. That's yeah. that's so, pretty much all it yeah. is. Hey, Colt, how old are you, bud? I'm twenty three. You're 23 Oof. years old. And I think uh, Jackson, how old is Jackson? I think he's 20 or 21. He's, yeah, he's young. 
He's as not. soon as as soon as he's of age, y'all got to go to the bar and have a beer and, and talk this thing out. You know, Just <laughs> I'm have a sure. Nice... Like I'm, yeah. I'm honestly nah, positive. Get... If we if we talk to each other, we would probably like each other. But like, yeah. I I don't know. Nah, dude, it's better for go sports if you guys don't. <laughs> yeah, no, don't go have that beer. We're gonna <laughs> no, get Jackson right. on after... here after. Jack is, Jackson's gonna tell his side of the story too. We're getting people hyped. This next, it, if you guys play in the finals again at the next event, it's gonna be the most watched game of the whole tournament. <laughs> I, I don't think right. even if it's not next event, I think we meet in the finals at least once once or twice more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like it's, yep. Yeah. Seems like it's I'm lined up to do it. that battle all, all season long. Semi pro yeah. the semi pro ranks are, are really fun to watch these days. Um shed some light on on your feelings on semi pro paintball and who you think is also some of the top teams in the league at the moment. Um well I mean like there there's obviously like the top two the top two dogs are us and blast camp. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after that, man, it's, it's hard to pick like a definitive. That's the third best team because I feel like a lot of teams, um, very layout to layout. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, like in the pro league, right? Like some, some teams are just like, Hey, this is their layout. And sometimes they go to the next event and they're just terrible. Right. Totally. So it, it's, it's hard to pick who I think the top one is one that comes to mind is newbies. Like I think they, they're playing good. Um, they didn't, but again, they didn't have like a good event last year, last event. Mm -hmm. Right. So then, but then, uh, like GG's it's not if, but when they finally get it to click again, like they did with distortion and they will be a top team again. Right. They, they got third in the series last year. Um, it's really just consistency. Like you don't know what you're going to get, right? Like sea dogs. I don't remember what they did in the first event, but then this event, we played them in prelims and they beat us. They beat us four to one. Right. Yeah. And then like it showed us like, oh, OK, we're playing the layout a little wrong. Right. You don't have to just flood the snake over and over and over. You can take a second. I love how you guys played uh, that field in the finals. I believe you guys went to the snake on the break the very first point mm -hmm. and won the point. And then from that point forward, you guys would go to the insert bunker, the God we call the money instead. So you wouldn't risk that body. They kept trying to run to the snake. You would have success shooting it. But the biggest thing about that formation is you would probably be five alive, which is an advantage if you get if you get a kill. But then yeah. you also had this weird gun advantage because that snake insert bunker could just sit there, even if they make the snake. Now you don't have to deal with anyone heads up and you could just do the bounce shot into the can. And it yeah. forced like the two on that side of the field to not really be able to play paintball for a little bit. You know, it was like really great strategy. I, I thought that that was, you know, pretty phenomenal and, and, and wise. No, that 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 was that and that was a huge switch that we had because like going into the the Saturday matches we were still flooding the snake, still still going because it was working right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we played against Sea Dogs and they played a lot slower and they were doing that work in the God spot. They were sitting there and we were like, okay, well we did this at practice and we were playing the different pro teams and it was working. Let's just mirror that and we switched some personnel around. So like instead of me playing the the snake side tower and just kind of shooting D side. It was like, hey, let's move Colt to the back center so he can tell everyone what's happening and go from there. And then my buddy Caleb was like, I can play the closet, which is with the tower. And mm -hmm. he's like, I will make sure they don't leave D side. Like, I'll keep tabs on it. You just do your thing and talk to Chavi, Trenton, Scott, everyone, and make sure everything's going going well and just Literally. calming everyone down, playing five on five, like you were saying. And I feel like that switch of like, hey, we don't have to just run at them. We can play the situation and just kill one body okay now it's five on four now it's five on three. Oh, this guy just traded four on two right like it's it made more sense to slow it down than to push so like changing the personnel around was huge but like what happened the reason we found that out was because of sea dogs because they they played slower than us and they beat us because of it yeah sometimes those matches in the prelims i mean same thing with uh our match against infamous was our very first match of the event you know, got kind of punched in the face and we're like, okay, I think we might be playing this field a little bit wrong. Let's, we need to readjust. And the teams that could adjust quickest um, and be flexible and not go in married to their game plans that were working in practice are the ones that'll have success, right? If you yeah. are like so married to what was working in practice because it was working so well, then as soon as something goes wrong, you're like, uh, no, let's keep trying this. Like, we just got to do it better. It's like, no, maybe you, you need to change what you're doing, you know, kind of rearrange things and be, you know, flexible mentally and be open to having players be put in new spots. And I love what you said actually about personnel, because 
that changes too. You don't just change like um, you, you guys actually didn't change what bunkers you were going to per se out of those two bunkers, mm -hmm. the closet and the back center. You just changed who was in those spots, which yeah. is really wise. You know, it's a, uh, we want our quarterback to be in a position to be able to quarterback, right? Yep. Instead of just sit there and do a job to where he loses vision and can't see the whole other side of the field. You're at a disservice if you, if you can't do what you do best, you know, uh, because of the spot you're in. So sometimes just repositioning what players are in what spots based on their strengths uh, or weaknesses is is one of the most valuable things you could do. Hundred percent. Yeah. No. It was a uh, it was a big one, and uh, now we're just excited for the next one because I imagine it's going to be another yeah. weird layout. I don't know if it's going to be the same where it plays slow or they're going to try to say screw it, change it up, and we're going to run really fast. Bro, they're so trying fun. to make these fields fast. I promise you, they think they're going to be fast because you could get to the fifties fast, and then they don't. They're like. Oh shit! I didn't realize you get yourself fast, but it, you can just shut down the whole other side of the field. Yeah, from getting here, you know. Um, 100%. I think they're trying to make them fast. We'll see, though. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because on both of the fields that we've seen so far for the twenty-three season, there's been that snake side laydown that cuts the whole entire Dorito side oh, down yeah. that you can get into if they're not past that D two. By right. the time that you get to that spot, you can really stifle all their movement on one side. And then vice versa, you we've had, you know, these uh these really powerful bunkers heads up that can slow down the snake. But it's been last events field was really fun. That traditional ladder snake. I love the way that they had the Doritos where you can just get low and pretty much, you know, as long as you didn't have that one gun on you, go all the way to the 50 essentially, or that D3 or D4. But they've been doing a good job, and I'm excited to see what they're going to cook up here. We've only yeah. got – it's one month, you know, one month till the tournament and uh, and practice weekends and all that good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, how are no, you guys training? Excited. How are you guys getting yeah. ready? We, uh, we're just doing our normal night ball and then uh, playing on the weekends. It's been, it's been hard the past two weeks because, like, we usually take, like, a week off after the event just to kind of, like, re-get after. I mean, everyone still goes to the gym and does all their stuff, but, like, most people are just like, Hey, I'll just do a couple drills here and there. I'm not going to actually practice this week, get your bodies to rest up. And then now we're trying to get back at it playing. Uh, like tonight we didn't play cause the weather, right? Like this, the weather this weekend is, or this week's kind of, kind of terrible, but we're trying to play, uh, the Wednesdays and Friday nights. And That's then, tremendous. Uh, yeah. You guys have such an amazing facility. Actually, I, I don't know if you listen to the show too much, but one of the previous episodes we had uh, the owner of GG Sports Park on, and I gave your guys' field a lot of praise for being one of the first fields that really catered to tournament paintball and showed like how possible it is to succeed with, you know, tournament paintball. And uh, basically that, it's a, you know, build it, they will come kind of thing. And if you nurture it and give people a nice place to play, I mean, shout out to JD, just the whole family over there is like phenomenal. The hospitality is great. And the field is pristine. Um, the whole night ball thing, like what a great scene for, you know, the culture out there. It's, it's absolutely dynamite. And it's a exactly how any paintball field that wants to excel and do well with tournament paintball, especially uh, should model themselves after. Right. So you guys have an amazing facility that really helps you guys with the ability to grow and get better. And the fact that you guys could play, dude, our, I'm so bummed. The closest field to me is Victory Paintball Park. It's about 45 minutes away, and they're closing down June 3rd. There's like no, and even Damn. with that field, it was like it's on base. So it's really difficult, difficult to get on during the week. Like I would give anything to have, you know, 15, 20 minutes away from me, a place that I could go for an hour or two a day just to sharpen up and do drills. My goodness, like I can't even begin to imagine how good my game could become if I was able to do that. You know, I, I could go and practice basketball more than I could practice paintball, which is pathetic you know it's really frustrating it's like i want to sell all my stuff and buy a, a house in the middle of nowhere and just kind of put some bunkers in the backyard <laughs> just so i could like stay sharp you know Yarber not having style. that access sucks 100 yeah. percent. you know but no it's it you're the field you guys have out there and just the whole the whole vibe there is amazing and and obviously i think a, a huge part to the team's success thank mm -hmm. you man i i really appreciate it that that was kind of our biggest goal when building the field was like to cater to the players and and make a yep. culture that people want to be at on the weekends, not just to get better at paintball, but like they generally feel happy being there. And cause like you go to some fields and it's just like the owners are kind of just like, Hey man, get your shit done and get out. Right. And like, we don't want to oh. be like that. Like we'll finish our practice. And then while we're cleaning the fields, like if we have people there that have, that are still getting done dressed, like we'll hang out and talk to them. Right. Cause like 
they're, they're most people in my opinion with paintball are there to relieve steam right like there's people that take it like this is what i want to do in life and this is the, i want to be pro and then there's people that are just like i want to compete but i just want to have fun and you have to cater to both at the same time because totally at the end of the day you don't know the difference in the person until you actually get to know them so like we we try to treat everyone like this is what they want to do in life this is like they want to be pro so we need to give them the best facility to do that yeah man. absolutely it, it's also sorry Ty. just one last thing about uh, about the field it's so important to have a facility that's clean and presentable right nobody wants to yeah. show up to a busted old dirty field where the nets look like they haven't been cleaned in three years they're filled with dust uh you you can't wear anything nice there because it's going to get ruined that is not appealing for anybody what mom wants to drop their kid off what dad wants to go go out there and drop their kid off you know it's that's just not it. You know, visuals are a very important part of, of, you know, people wanting to do things. They really are. It tells us like, Oh, this is nice. This is not nice, <laughs> you know? And so like, that is a, another crucial part. And I think you guys do a fantastic job. You know, the banners around the field really makes it look professional. You know, it, it looks sporty. It looks, um, you know, the way a professional paintball field should look. I appreciate yeah. that. A lot, man. Yeah, and the the lights are tremendous for the video and the all the you know it's all about the phone. Everything's on the phone. So having so many people out there with pictures and video of that amazing field with the lights above it, and there's several across the country that have you know kind of taken that blueprint and put it into their fields, and it looks amazing. And it's a huge attractant for people to come and play paintball. And then you can open up your doors for Wednesday nights, Friday nights, and you're turning your ROI into much more right you're getting you're getting more out of the field by having those yeah. lights and it's going to bring people in yeah absolutely and honestly i think the more people have time to play like you were saying the better people will get the better yeah. people get the more people are getting paid i think and the more paintball gets bigger because like if people are putting more time into it and have the option to put that much time into it they get better which in turn makes players like yourself get better so then yeah. you'll get paid more to stay up there. And it's, I don't know, I think it'll start getting it to where a weird trickle down effect where people start getting paid more because they're able to play more, if that makes sense. Yeah, we got to be playing as much paintball as possible. And, you know, not just for the skill set, but to make sure that people are continuing to have fun and play this amazing sport. It's a, like you said, it's a lifesaver for so many people. And it's yeah. a great way to get out of the house. And like you said, blow off steam, hang out with your friends, compete be a part of a, an organization, a tribe, because as humans, we need that. We need a tribe, you know, and paintball is that for so many people. So we got to make sure that we keep pushing it. Like you said, the sky's the limit. We want to make sure the dream is that, you know, young Timmy, who's eight years old and wants to play paintball, is going to have a future in this game and that he's going to be able to tell his mom and dad, hey, I'm going to play <clears throat> paintball and they're going to feel good about that. That's mm -hmm. the dream. We got to make sure that we facilitate action that is going to perpetuate that into the future and make sure we have a really strong sport for the youngsters because that's that's why we're doing this, right? We've myself, Marcel, we've been playing pro for over 20 years and you know, it's just like we we've won all the tournaments, we've done the things and we've we're continuing to do that and push the limits, but it's for the the future, man. We got to make sure we we build this thing correctly. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cole, I would like to hear your insight as to, you know, I, I don't know if you put much thought into it, but for professional players, um, what are some ways you think we could end up in a spot where pro players can make, you know, a, a decent salary across the board? What kind of things do you think need to happen in order to make that a reality? Man, um, I haven't put a ton of thought into it, but I, I do know, like, just, just chatting with uh, people like Mark uh mark johnson right like yeah it's hard for people to want to pay players if if for one say say i play i pay player a right and then like halfway through the year he's just kind of like ah I, like i'm good and then just leaves and there's nothing we can do about it like i feel like that happens in paintball like kind of too often um like contracts aren't as um as well kept as they should be but also I feel like the pay needs to go up. So like, I kind of understand why, why certain players are like, well, I'm like barely making pennies here. I'm not going to commit to this contract when I just got offered a lot more. 
Um, so like maybe it's like a hesitancy on uh, different owners because they're like, I don't want to pay you ABC if you're just going to leave halfway through the year because you get offered a little bit more somewhere else. Yeah, um, so, and I, I could be wrong, right? I'm just kind of like, I, you know, if I had a, a ton of money, I would be hesitant on paying certain people if like it happens in paintball and like the whole attitude around it is just like, oh, well, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like that puts a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths that start to pay players. And then they're just like, why would I can, why would I pay more if I paid this guy, say all his paintball plus five grand and he left because he got 10 grand somewhere else. Right. So like, I feel like that's a big thing that makes a lot of people have like a bitter taste in their mouth. Cause there's not as much like, um, I don't want to say loyalty because, like, it's a contract, but, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do, certainly. Um, but I think there there has to be some sort of, like, threshold, you know, that is, like, a, you know, cost you know cost of living, right? If you're yep. not making something that could afford your, your basic cost of living expenses, then uh, it's not enough for a contract, you know? Um, yeah. But if there is a significant number, and and there actually are are pretty significant numbers around the league with some of the players, um, and I I you know thinking of those players in my mind, I can't think of a time where they just bailed mid season, um, you know on on those contracts right or those those deals that are actually lucrative, um, you know do people leave in the off season? Yeah, but I mean that's every sport, right? If if you get yeah. a better offer, if it's 5,000 more, even if it's less and you leave for other reasons in the off season, then, you know, obviously who cares? That's, that's just the way sports go. Um, I have heard as well that contracts are, are like not enforceable uh, in paintball. There's something with sports that you have to get passed through Congress um, in order to be able to uphold uh, athlete and organizational contracts. And it has something to do with like not being able to, you know, uh, limit somebody from the opportunity to work. So if somebody has the, an opportunity to make more money now that like, doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense to me because in regular business, there's, you know, non-compete clauses. Like if you get a, get hired for a position at a company, um, you, and you leave the company, you're not allowed to like work in the same field for a certain amount of time. So I don't know if like there's different structures or ways that these contracts could be done. Right. But certainly, yeah. certainly some more legitimacy in some way would be fantastic. Um, some more, you know, uh, level compensation would, would be great because pro players do sacrifice a lot of time, uh, to do this, you know, and it's very difficult to, uh, manage multiple jobs, families, and, and, you know, all the weekends away to be really good at this. So I would love to see us get to a, a spot where, and maybe in my mind, the quickest way to do that is some sort of revenue sharing from either the NXL or go sports, you know, off of our likeness obviously i do think our likeness has value um as professional players you know obviously go sports yeah. is, is built around that there should be some sort of kickback to the pro players uh in my opinion and i'm a huge fan of doing whatever i can to help boost go sports at the same time right like we want go sports to go to the damn moon um they do a phenomenal job they've given us something that our sport has never you know really had at this level and this consistent um mm -hmm. nxl same same thing you know obviously the league does better because pro players are at the venue. Like, I think that that's an obvious, right? It's a national yeah. event for that reason. So, um, and I know Tom is thinking of all these really neat, unique ways to, to do it. I really do think Tom's heart's in the right place. And I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, so hopefully, hopefully sooner than later, there'll be some sort of standardization. Um, I do think it's going to be very difficult to have like some big outside sponsor come in because we just don't have the numbers yet, you know, and especially, uh, being behind a paywall with the webcast, it makes it really difficult to, to, see exactly how many numbers we can get um so we got to do it from within somehow you know well it's 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 like what you and tyler do right like you guys are yeah. promoting paintball a lot right like yeah totally. like just like you guys you guys ryan kyle and like uh D's on. ronnie yeah, yeah and like yeah. ronnie right like but like other than that like and i i could be missing names but i'm like is there any other pros that are like actively trying to just promote the paintball lifestyle mr h and yeah yeah for sure but right but like yeah. that's like that's yeah. like the list yeah. right like there's yeah. not yeah. even yeah. 10 dudes yeah. and there's I feel like <laughs> there's definitely some more you Jim know gotta get a lot of love yeah there's there's a lot there's some great divisional players even media you know shout out to ryan moffett a lot of people are popping up with like podcasts shout out to did it hurt one of the uh goats in the ptg discord but he's right his own what he's saying is but, is but right. i'm saying the pros the pros like, 
the pros like because like me like what got me into like truly like oh That's i fair. i want to do this um was like like yeah like i want to start game playing but like <laughs> <laughs> i actually i actually started listening to you guys like right before we went pro with ac dallas and i oh, really tight. enjoyed it like it there we go and i, I still yeah. listen like here and there when i now i've actually stopped like listening to music and like everything and try to just just because I ended nice. up listening to music too much to get motivated for stuff, but no, keep rocking. Um, you gotta a, keep dude, rocking. That's that's a thing, bro. Hundred percent. Like I, I get to a point where I listen to music so much that it's like it no longer has any effect on my dopamine or you know whatever it is Absolutely. that motivates me. And I'm like, uh, okay, so now I've overdosed on this. So how do I get motivated now? You know, it's a, it's dude, a thing for sure. Try try okay. like a month, no music, and yeah. then do one day in the gym with music. Oh yeah, I guarantee you're, just, you're gonna be like. 100%. It's, it's 100%. insane. Yeah. But no, like I, I look at it and I'm like, there's not a lot of people doing stuff like that anymore. Like the impact series, right? Like that was a huge yeah. thing that in like the, the dynasty uh, 15 on YouTube, like that, that got me like, all right, that's sick. Like I, I yeah. want to do that. Right. Um, but I, I don't think, I mean like Jackson actually like credit to him, like he has a vlog series. Like that's, yeah, totally. like, that's dope. There's people job. that like get into his stuff and then start playing paintball. Right? absolutely yeah. it's i think if everyone starts actively trying to do that and like i've floated around the idea of like i should start doing something to promote paintball more to people that don't play and i think if more pros did that mm -hmm. it would get more attention yeah totally absolutely. agree but yep and and you're absolutely right colt you know we need people to just go all in you know whatever you can do if if you can't that's fine but if you can definitely take a good look at doing whatever you can to help this sport whether it's having a little side brand, a little video blog, vlog, whatever you can do, you know, set aside some time, 15, 20 minutes a day and work on that. And then it'll grow and perpetuate and become something that you like, we would have never dreamed. We're coming up on episode number 200 here, like within the next few weeks. Like when we started this in 2020, I would, I would have never thought we'd be coming up on episode 200 in 2023. <laughs> I did, baby. Dude, we talked about we talked about back then episode one thousand. That's yeah, that's coming. It's around the corner, dude. Yes, sir. It's around it the is. corner. <laughs> it is crazy. It's gone by man. fast, though. It's gone by fast. But let's yeah. all just dig in. I guess that's what I'm really trying to say, man. Is yeah. dig in. You know, do what you can, and uh, it's gonna take all of us. And everybody's got to sound the horn, put in there a little creative process because we're all so creative and unique. You know, Colt, you're Great. creative, unique in your own way. And if you had something on YouTube. I bet you it would pop. I appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm yeah. honestly, I'm, I've been tempted to look into that and start doing some stuff. And Verb, you got Verb with you too. He'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> Verb's the man, dude. He's yeah. the man, dude. Yeah. He is. It's like Dum Dum Paintball. And shout out to Dum Dum Paintball. We're about to have Dalton Vanderbilt on as soon as we let Colt go here. Uh, yes, sir. But, you know, like what a brilliant idea. Unfortunately, he hasn't totally followed through with it. You know, the new team, I think impact is a little more serious. They don't, they don't really want him to, you know, be joking around as much, but like, what a brilliant idea, dude. You know, it's just a funny way to get people like random people on YouTube that are like, Oh, what's this? Click on it. They watch, they laugh. And then it links to other videos of like actual professional paintball. It's like, Whoa, that is super cool. You know, yep. that's, um, yep. I, I feel like through social media and through YouTube and just, the current climate of how things can go viral, I do think it could happen for our sport almost overnight, you know, to where it's like a few different things kind of go viral and people are like, well, what is this? Let's, you know, maybe send someone out to film this and see what this is about. And then all of a sudden it's on a few major, you know, little channels and, and um, you never know. We just, Tyler always says it's the best. We have to continue to package this thing as well as we can, you know, and, and having fields like yours that are packaged properly is a big part of that. Cause what if somebody from, you know, Red Bull or, uh, you know, some big electrolyte drink or Nike even is like, they get wind of something that goes viral and like, you know what, I'm going to, we're going to send a rep out to a local field and see what this is about. And they go out to their closest field tournament paintball field. And it's a shithole. That is a disaster. But if they go out and it's a field like yours or GG Sports Park, um, you know, shout out to Blast Camp. They actually have an amazing field too. Got to give them some love since, you know, this, yeah. this episode kind of opened up with them. They <laughs> see one of these fields that have, you know, uh, a great, massive, grand kind of presentation, you know. Uh, and you see like the professionalism. You see professional paintball players. There's posters of these like real professional players and 
maybe they'd be like, whoa, this is like, this is a thing. This is kind of cool. Maybe there's videos of ghost sports on at these fields, you know, to, to constantly be showing like what professional paintball looks like. Um, you know, like these are important aspects that you never know when you, you never even, we might not even know if that has happened. That could have very well happened by now. And, and the guy like pulls into the driving, you know, to the parking lot and is like, nah, we're out of here. This is crazy. What is this? Like calls his boss and like is like down already. And he's yeah. just like, yeah, all right, I'm out of yeah. here. Calls his boss and is like, <laughs> what a joke. We, we don't want to be in this promise you you know this is the biggest field in the area now nah, there's like 10 people uh everything was messed <laughs> this is like not it right and you know it's no shade on some of these field owners but you got to stop looking at the short-term returns and start looking at the long-term potential returns because if we really nurture this thing the right way there's more eyes than ever before on the sport right now i think we can truly break through and everybody just has to come together and package this thing appropriately mm, absolutely well said and Colt, we want to uh, make sure we got some Discord action as well. Shout out oh, to yeah. PTG World. Everybody tapping in with Colt here. Um, we got, let's see, we got Cyrus. He says, uh, with the dominant performance in the past two events, what has been the team's practice schedule leading up to events with PB Fitz Nightball? I'm wondering how much time y'all spend on the layout from the time it drops to the tournament. Uh, we play, so Friday during the day is when like all the diesel guys get there. So we'll play that Wednesday night. We'll have our normal Wednesday night ball. And then Friday during the day, we'll have a practice with, uh, all the diesel guys. And then if any other protein that they have practicing them shows up, we'll play them as well. Um, or even just our own guys. Cause we have nine dudes. So we just get one body. And then Saturday, yeah. of course we play and then Sunday. And then, um, if people have time off, then they can get out to the field Monday and do some drills or something, but nothing crazy. Like everyone thinks we're doing like two a days every day on, on every layout. <laughs> but if you do that, like you'll know the layout, but then you'll be mentally and physically drained come the event. And then you can't actually perform. Mm. All right. But perfect. Nice dude. Yeah. Uh, bitter medic wants to know Colt. What is one of the most beneficial drills you do with the PB fit team? Break shooting, baby. That's the, that's, that's that the best the one. That's mm. the key to success, dude. I, I work on my break shooting more than anything in paintball that, mm. and I, and again, I've been adding in other drills, right? I got to get better at certain things, but I mean, you get a kill off break, you start five on four. It's a huge advantage, right? So, uh, that's, 100%. that's my, you want to get really good at paintball, shoot somebody off break 80% of the time. If you could do that, any pro team will probably pick you up. If you could shoot someone off the break 80 per, a legitimate 80 <laughs> percent yeah. of the time, I don't know a pro team that won't pick you up. Like Straight if it's a up. guarantee, 80 percent of the time, <laughs> yeah, shit, <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> hired, yeah, hired. I mean, you're you're automatically giving our team a significant <laughs> advantage That's every crazy. single point. Yeah, yeah. Hard that would do. be tremendous. All right, we got um, we got Mark Paris as a bigger dude playing himself. Do do you have any tips for things that you've learned as you've grinded through the ranks that maybe don't apply to smaller players? Um, not not the 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 don't apply to smaller players. I will say, I actually, as weird as it sounds, I'm very thankful that like I grew up as big as I am to play because like. When I Dude, do something, let me just say this first and foremost: you're a fucking stud out there. Like re... you, 100. you run it, bro. <laughs> One hundred. I appreciate that like a lot, man. Because like, because like yeah. even like growing up, like I was told like you need to lose weight if you're ever gonna be good at this, right? Like, and the fact about paintball is if you're in if you're an athletic person, it's easier, right? But it doesn't mean you have to be athletic. It's just easier. No right so being that's the beautiful thing about paintball is like literally it's the floodgates are open like you want to play paintball get out there and run it It, it's like that i I just think it's 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 real mental so like growing up big like i i kind of was just like all right if i'm gonna make a move i have to make sure every single body is put in i have to make sure where they're looking i have to there's so many other steps i have to make for a move to happen because like if i get caught in the open i'm not diving (laughs) <laughs> and like getting away from it. Like I just either have to shoot you or I'm dead. Right. So totally. I have to make more calculated moves. So what I will say is like, as a big player to that, you have to take into account is like, you have to connect with your teammates and force them to connect with you more than any other player for your own safety. But not only that, like it makes them play better. 
Absolutely. Well, you're a great, great teammate and your gun skills are phenomenal, right? Like yeah. coupled with your gun skills, put you up against anybody and, and get into a gunfight and you have a really good chance because you've been working really hard at that, you know, and, and there's nothing that can be taken away from your work ethic, dude. That's first and foremost. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, because we see it, man. We see you out there getting it. 100 <laughs> percent. Cole, my, my last question comes from the boogeyman. He wants to know. What is your drive that pushes you? What's your daily inspiration? What makes you who you are today? <laughs> as, as as weird as it sounds, I, I this is like my favorite hoodie, and uh, it's from it's from my oh, buddy yeah. Scott Stewart, right? So he he has a welts company. It's called Welts, but um, it, you just and have to be sweatshirt. obsessed, man. Like yeah, obsessed. Like I I am I'm legitimately obsessed with just wanting to be the best at paintball, right? And and I feel like that that's my drive right like i don't want to just play paintball i want when i die a hundred years from now when it's like paintball's making as much money as like the nba and stuff like that because we are a young sport i want people to look back and talk about my name as like no he was he was real good like how people talk about bill russell like Mm, yeah it's you want that in sports i feel like that's how that's how you get remembered in life as being either a phenomenal athlete in sports or being super rich or inventing something. And two of those, <laughs> it's really hard to come by. I'm decent at paintball. So I'm trying to like <laughs> be the best at paintball. Cause I want, I when I'm that. dead, my name's remembered, not just like, gone. I love that. Yeah, dude, you're amazing, man. Outstanding. Oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah. That's legendary stuff, kiddo. And uh, just keep working hard and having fun. And great things are going to happen for you in your paintball career and any anything else that you do in life, man. You got a great mindset, a great outlook, and you can tell that you're working hard, which is half the battle. So just keep having fun. And you and the gang keep crushing it out there and having fun with PB Fit and the crew. I appreciate you guys. Colt, yeah, where man. can everybody keep up with you? Uh, Instagram, uh, colt.lucow45. Lucow, baby. Tap in. All right. Cope 45. My man, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to have you back on again uh, throughout the season. Want to keep up with the rivalries. We're going to have to get Jackson on here too. Young Jackson's been on before. Got a lot of love for Jackson. You know, I know him personally. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to get to the bottom of this and see who comes out victorious at the end of the season. I can't wait. (laughs) Oh, I'm excited. (laughs) Big action. Legendary brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night, bro. Peace. Peace. What a great guy. Hey, Epic. Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. Colt is uh, absolutely dynamite. He did just leave pretty quick. Hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we got his up, But I, th- I, think, I think we do. Um, all right, dude. Dalton is waiting. Thirsty. Vanderbile. For the phone call. Let's go, Vanderbile. Dalton. Let's see. Let's dude, we got to get on him about uh, dumb, dumb paintball. Where's I it been know, at, Dalton? dude. Dumb, the dumb people are hungry. paintball. Do you think he's going to realize that he's live as soon as he answers or he's going to say something stupid? <laughs> yeah, what up? <laughs> Yo. What up, Dalty? <laughs> Dude, are you saying something bad about me? <laughs> I said, do you think he's going to realize that he's live when he answers or is he going to say something stupid? <laughs> <laughs> You're on the show, daddy-o. What up? You boys tired of talking about Texas paintball? Bro, oh, Texas man, paintball is what's up right now. <laughs> I know. Talk, Shoot. Yeah, we we got one of them right here, Tyler, dude. Texas yep. paintball, bro. We got Texas oh, paintball in the hey. house, Daddy. Yeah. How you been, Dalton? <laughs> How you doing, dude? Uh, I think better days, but I'm good. Kids are good, so that's good. Family's good. good. Uh, you know how it is. Paintball days aren't as going as smooth as they used to, but <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, brother. Well, for for everybody that doesn't know um why don't you let them know what's going on because um you kind of hurt your arm a little bit out there in texas and uh it's a complete bummer because you are one of the best paintball players in the world and one of my favorite people and players to watch so let everybody know what's going on dude thanks dude uh yeah so i had a little bit of an injury uh kind of a weird fluke injury i don't think i've ever heard of any kind of paintball injury kind of like this i mean if you could remember ray lewis that's what kind of ended his career was his tricep tendon so oh. but nowadays the surgery is it, it, it seems to be hopefully uh a little bit better than in the you know yeah in the day and age but anyways i was essentially yeah, that was a long time a little, ago 
Ray Lewis. Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, I was just doing a dive into the little, uh, you know, into the first Dorito out. Um, and unfortunately, the the ground was a little sticky. I think I've been watching videos, and people have been, you know, if you watch any of those videos from Texas, people are sticking like like glue oh. to that ground for, yeah. for whatever reason. I don't know. Yeah. But I was just doing a routine little dive and just got completely stuck. And you know me, I'm fast as heck. I'm big bodied. <laughs> <laughs> so I go zero to a hundred and then a hundred to zero real quick. <laughs> uh, and I just got stuck. And I was like, originally I was like, Oh my God, maybe my shoulder just blew out. I don't know what happened. It was like a punch to my arm. And then I kind of gathered myself. I'm like moving my arm around the rest. Like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And then I just like, I went and uh, I actually went down and shot the last two guys. And then I yeah. like, kind of like, as I was going to the pit, I like dropped to a knee and I was like, just kind of flustered and trying to like gather my thoughts on what the heck is going on with my arm. Mm. And then I'm kind of realizing it was a tricep. Like I could feel it. I'm pretty in tune with my body, just, you know, lift, lifting weights throughout the years and stuff. So I knew it was my tricep, something with my tricep. And then, yeah. So lo and behold, I got an MRI. Uh, it was a tricep hair um to the tendon which is a bummer because there's really you know you could just live with it or you could get surgery and unfortunately like so where where the the tendon attaches to the bone and the muscle there's three parts of it and one of them is kind of basically completely torn off and the other two are damaged mm. so, Jeez, man. oh yeah yeah, yeah that was a bummer and, and the funniest part is like, you know, when I'm showing people my arm and like the next day, you know, we went two and zero the first day and the second day we, we played aftermath and X factor. And I was like, I'll just sit out, you know? Uh, and we, we lose the aftermath and I'm like, dude, all right. Well, and I kept telling Dave, I'm like, if you need me, I'll play. If you need me, I'll play. And I had like a fat arm. I don't know if you guys saw the picture. I had like Bro. a softball back there. <laughs> well, your, your muscle was down in your elbow because the tendon yeah. wasn't holding it where it was supposed to be holding it. Exactly. Yeah. That so, looked crazy. <laughs> no, so, for everybody listening, yeah. it was ridiculous. Like when I saw you, Dalton, I thought your I thought your arm was broken. And I I the what tripped me out was you were just playing paintball. So I had just been watching you play paintball. <laughs> And I was like looking at your arm and like, what the hell? When did this happen? And and you played, dude. Talk about grit, bro. You played yeah. with that, <laughs> with with your tendon completely obliterated. And you know, talk about talk about playing uh, at all costs. You know what I'm saying? And thankfully, yeah. thankfully, you know, you're going to be able to get this surgery and be back on the field relatively quickly. Um, this is going to be just yeah. you know a minor speed bump, and I. I think I saw you tapped in on that Riley episode that we had and his yeah, yeah. wild story um, of being in that, that car accident and being able to, you know, come back and play paintball and, and have a ton of fun. And dude, just know that we have your back. The whole paintball community has your back and, you know, we'll be sending that good energy your way for, for your arm, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That could, that couldn't have come at a better time because, you know, surgery no matter what it is it's like nerve-wracking just going for a yeah. checkup to the doctor it, you know how it is so for sure and then putting life into perspective listening to riley's story and it's like you know it's like mm. you know people have it a lot worse than me so that as long as my mentals are good which you know everyone has their own battles and i only know yeah. what i know so my you know my biggest injuries are my biggest injuries so i can't imagine his but I, it does put it in perspective when i hear a story like that so so uh shout out to riley yeah that's just crazy but um yeah and bro, yeah and it, then i it's not easy dalton like you saw me at the beginning of the season i fractured my hand you know and yeah, uh, yeah. you were out there for practice and what you say about the mentality is very important because it's super easy to you know to get in a slump and get depressed and feel you know right. really really not good but um i want to be the first one to say if you ever you know need make a phone call we're desert homies you know what i'm saying we out here <laughs> and uh you know i got your back it's it's something that's very important to have good friends like i can call on marcelo i can call on my teammates on houston heat and we can call on each other to support each other through these tough times as well yeah it's, it's so amazing i mean yeah yeah, that was another good point listening to that podcast is like back in the day we used to have like 
you know, we would take care of our own and everyone else would get, you know, you wouldn't even talk to anyone else. But nowadays, like obviously our friendship goes a lot deeper than paintball. And it's just, it's just a nice thing to have because, you know, people don't know what we're doing. Like friends outside of paintball don't know. What, like people think I'm crazy for doing this, you know, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you are a little but, crazy, uh, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have fun still. Yeah, at yeah, the same buddy. time, though, like, we are our own. All of us grew up together. So, like, you know, I don't have friendships with players on other teams that I didn't grow up playing with. You yeah. know, I mean, I have friendships, but it's outside of the nets, right? I can I can go to events and still kind of shoot the shit with people like, you know, Tyler. I could see you, Dalton, Little B, Mouse. But it, that's about it, you know? Like, I, I'm forgetting a few names maybe, but it's because, we, you know, we are part of that tribe. You know what I mean? So it's a little different. We've been doing this for a long time. We understand the politics of it. We understand, you know, we've just been in the game for a long time, but it's a little different. I still am very standoffish at the events, you know, when it's like we're getting ready to play a certain team, you know, you got to mm -hmm. build up these certain rivalries in your head and, and, um, and, and use them as fuel. So it's, you know, very much so still like that for me, but I think, you know, there's certain, certain players and certain friendships that have just been there for so long because we were once teammates, you know, that you, you do build that bond and it's kind of, you know, hard to ever break that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like once you're teammates once, like you're pretty much teammates for life, you know, it's like a, a weird bond mm -hmm. brotherhood. <laughs> Aftermath. We got the bloodline. All <laughs> Yo, Aftermath Dang. played good at the last event, man. Yep. Yeah. They the boys he does, out. dude. Yeah, he yeah, does. yeah, yeah. Not on Sunday, but hey, they did in the prelims. <laughs> you yeah. Know? They did in the prelims. They uh went 4-0. Oh. I actually thought David Ramirez did a phenomenal job coaching. He had a great balance of, you know, a conservative breakout. Their shots were on point, so they obviously did a very good job training leading up to the event. And um, then they just kind of melted teams, right? They would get a little bit of a lead and and not do too much. And then they would have a, a nice punch play, like, at the perfect time. I, I thought, uh, you know, David did a, a, a very good job. Obviously, the players stepped up. And maybe things just kind of fell, you know, into their favor, too. But they had a stellar event. Really happy to see because it's a complete rebuild. I mean, they've got, like, nobody that they've, you know, Grayson, I think, is the most experienced player on the team. I'm sorry if I'm you know, wrong about that. And there's another one, but I think Grayson might be the most You're experienced right. player on the team. Um, and that's only, you know, a few years. Um, so really crazy to see them perform like that. Uh, very cool. Cool for the aftermath brand. Yeah, they're, they're looking good. And I, I think I heard on the other, uh, that the other lame podcast that people talk about, I think Ryan, Ryan and Sick or someone, <laughs> they were talking about aftermath being in dead last this season you could roll the tape i don't know oh roll the, sure. tape. roll the tape yeah those hot takes over there man you know uh yeah, i don't know i don't know if they know the game like we do <laughs> oh that's too good hey uh, do you guys have your uh tinfoil hat yeah, oh yeah we got the tinfoil hat uh, <laughs> i'm kind of thinking uh you know now that i think about it like if, oh. if i were to make a conspiracy and I oh, was boy. like a few 50-year-olds, 50 you know. If you take the youth and the talent from some – I think they made a movie about this. Michael Jordan starred in it. <laughs> they steal the talent from players and the youth and for their own. It's like Space, <laughs> space Jam, but for paintball. Yes. Is that, is that what you're thinking uh, Dynasty is doing? <laughs> I think they have a guy. <laughs> you might have a guy, dude. Might have a guy. Dude, Marcelo doesn't even have his tinfoil hat on. He knows. Look at it. <laughs> he doesn't even need the hat. I said, I, like, thought, oh, no. I thought we were talking about conspiracy theories yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> we were spitting facts. You're leaving the hat off. On that. <laughs> oh, let oh. me know when you get to the good stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Alex Frazier is legitimately a wizard. Like he's he, a wizard. Yeah, he has a wand a wizard. and like yeah. all of it. So yeah, he's a wizard. He's working the magic. And uh, dude, it's it's just fun to see paintball where it's at, man. Um, we got so many great storylines going on, and and the impact storyline is tremendous too. You guys have, you know, an amazing camp over there. Before I dive into impact, though, we gotta know 
what the heck is going on with dumb dumb paintball? Are we gonna see another drop soon or what? <laughs> dude, I yeah, dude, I it's like it's really a passion of mine to make like videos and that, that stuff, but it's just I don't know, it's just hard time, family life, paintball, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I gotta do it. I just gotta grit you down. You gotta do. Come just on, do, do it, bro. Yeah. yeah. I'll meet you. <laughs> I'll meet you out at Battle Zone. You, you think Battle Tyler Zone? doesn't have family life, paintball, all this stuff? I mean, I got all that too. I don't. I don't have a family. I don't have wife and kids. But you know, that's a pretty big part of it. I get it. But Tyler makes it work. Look at it. He's on PTG every week, all week. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I just gotta sit my ass down in this chair over here and and hang out. You know. <laughs> yeah. Making those YouTube videos like that is is definitely a lot of work. But bro, Battle Zone is not too far away. You know, I know um, first and foremost, we got to make sure your arm's good to go. And then uh, whenever yeah. you want to, we'll meet out there and, and film some dumb, dumb stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ham. Yeah. Dal, I do want to talk. Uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. I, w- I was just going to say, um, watching you guys play in the finals was really cool for me because I'm not going to lie. I was rooting for Tyler. Mm. One, just because, you know. I was kind I of like him for more too, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just tired of seeing uh, Dynasty win. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, it was funny though because I was watching you guys in the airport, and I'm you know walking through my phone, and I'm like doing my thing, and then uh, I think it was the point where Blake gets the major, and you and he goes up one, and mm-hmm. Dynasty starting with four. So mm-hmm. I think he was one up, you know, in one body advantage. Yeah. And then I get my order. I'm going, I'm ordering at the airport and I get my to go food, you know, and I get, I look at my receipt and it goes <laughs> number 33. And I go, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Dynasty's <laughs> going to win. They're going to blow it. <laughs> I almost wanted to just turn it off. Next thing you know, the, the next point starts. Marcelo happens to shoot Chad in the barrel, gets the penalty. <laughs> it's just the whole. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> Dude, you gave me the powers. You didn't even know it. You, get, you shouldn't have ordered that cheeseburger there, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. that's too good. Yeah, that's that's too but good. Tyler, you, Tyler, you were playing freaking amazing. And I was getting yeah. frustrated because they were talking about who the MVP would be. And I'm like, well, it, don't even talk about it. I mean, your team, <laughs> your whole team played great. I, I'll give them that people showed up but i mean just come on it's you know good you know, we're having fun Dalt. we're playing good ball <laughs> man we're coming for these blue smurfs over here we're going to come at don't yeah. get so focused on us that you forget about everyone else listen though. you know that's the, a public the service announcement to, to the no league. that's right you're absolutely yeah, right because yeah, damage yeah. x factor you know Damn. and a slew of other teams yeah. that could very easily knock you off totally. your position the so you gotta deep. yeah but but come on, give me a break, Marcelo. You guys are running the racket here, so obviously <laughs> we're getting so lucky, dude, <laughs> bro. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. I look back at every event, I'm like mad because I'm like, we shouldn't have won, you know. And I like I try yeah. to voice it to everybody. I'm like, we shouldn't have won. We need to fix this, this, and this. And everyone's like, shut up. And I'm like, well, <laughs> fuck. Well, watch. We're gonna lose the next one because we didn't fix this, and then and then we get lucky. Again. It does <laughs> feel like that. Uh, it, <laughs> it, does, yeah. it does feel like that. <laughs> Shit. Oh, that's funny. shit well um, you guys are doing well dalton your guys's team's doing great um obviously heat's having some fun we're out there playing some good ball it's it's great paintball at the top totally. of the pro circuit you know and x factor is always in the hunt damage is scary always you know there's there's just so much good paintball being played so Dalt, talk to us about impact and the current iteration that you guys have going on obviously there's a huge switch up you know at the beginning of the season how has it been transitioning into the organization and playing ball with impact? Well, for, you know, for me, I've, I've been in that camp before, you know, this is my third year. So I feel like I fit like a glove. Um, pretty much. I, there were some new faces obviously that I haven't played with, but, uh, and that stuff, it, it is hard to work out. That stuff does take time. Believe it. I mean, mm-hmm. it is like hard to say how much time it takes, but like, especially when you get in low body situations, you know, like a three on three, like if I'm in a three on three with you guys, I know exactly how you're going to play. I know you guys are going to know how I play, but you know, with new faces, new people, it it takes time to learn those things. So there is a little bit of a learning curve, you know, for me. um, And I'm learning those things, but 
as far as like for the majority of the team and just the, the coaching and the ownership, it's just, it's right back to where we left off. And I couldn't say yeah more great things about those guys. You know, Bart, Bart's the man, Dave's amazing coach, you know, knows the game to the best of them. And uh, yeah, we're having fun and hopefully we start uh, taking down the dragon and all those other teams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bro. I just got to say, because we talked obviously throughout the event after your injury and I was like, man, I don't think you should play looking out as a friend, like, fuck dude. Yeah. Like the worst thing is, is to, you know, have something worse. And I've had my own injuries and wanted to play through it as well. And like, you know, it's, it's so much easier when you're removed from those injuries and you've gone through them to realize how important it is to just say, you know, I'm just going to sit out uh, and, and yeah. just fully recover but you gritted it out on Sunday and it's very, it, it, you can make a very good argument that if you weren't on the field, you guys don't get past damage. Um, you know, you had the kind of late game heroics to go down and hit the buzzer while Rainey was still alive. Uh, talk us through like your mentality in that game. Obviously you have to play differently because you can't be your normal self diving around from spot to spot. Um, you knew you had to protect your arm, but at the same time you wanted to find a way to bring value to the team, which you absolutely did. Um, what yeah. was your mentality going into that, into that game? Yeah, you, you have to find that dark place where you're just, you just tell yourself, you know, whatever you have to tell yourself. I'm, and it sounds crazy, but I'm, I'm telling myself I'm ready to die in here. You know, just, mm -hmm. it's like a little dark and twisted, but that's just the mentality I feel like I had to have because obviously I was in pain and I couldn't really use my arm. Like physically I couldn't like, I couldn't how did, die. How did you I, load? If I dove, I <laughs> like so like <laughs> like he like always does. My... He puts his gun in between his yeah. legs and then looks. <laughs> he, he did that before he was hurt. <laughs> yeah, I just went out there with my loader and uh, empty pods. No, I, the, 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 the snap shoot, like the snap shooting and loading, was all good. Like I could, I could use my arm in that way. I just couldn't put like any weight, like zero mm. weight on it essentially mm -hmm. so like snap shooting it, it was like there was it was fine you know Jeez. but yeah i just had that mentality and i just told the coaches like i'm ready if you need me and my name was called and i was like all right if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do it you know and then lo and behold uh yeah the time came it was the overtime point i was like you know, I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna go. I can't dive, so I'll just go hit the buzzer. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, my my team definitely, you know, showed out that game. Uh, I felt like we were just starting to get like comfortable on that field, and communication was good. But but yeah, it was one of those things. I was just ready to do whatever, you know, and in one in one of those modes. <laughs> mm -hmm. What game did you injure your arm in, Dalt? It was the second game. Um, first point against NRG. Jeez. Yeah. I was like, so you, yeah. you uh, played obviously a little bit of the third and then the fourth game as well. Do you think that by playing in those two games, you injured your arm more or did it stay consistent? Yeah. I mean, it, it it's hard to say because for sure, definitely didn't help obviously, but like, um, when I hit it, like it, it was like, you know, it, tore, it was yeah. bad. And, yeah. and, and, um, when I played on it, luckily enough, I didn't, I somehow I was like, had the wherewithal of like, uh, mm -hmm. not diving and not, it, which is hard to do because you just, you don't think about it. You're like, Oh, I, I just don't use my arm. And, but sometimes mm -hmm. things happen. Like I remember Brandon threw me an extra pod and I had to like lean to grab it. And I was like, Oh, so that didn't help. Jeez. But, uh, but like, actually, I was pretty good about like staying off it. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think I did too much damage, to be honest. Maybe I was just lucky or naive to that. But I think the, the blunt of it was that 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 hit. Yeah, I yeah. Dude, I still can't believe. I cannot believe what it looked like when you brought your arm over after, <laughs> and you were like, you're jiggling it and wiggling the all the fluid that was at your elbow. It was huge, it was and crazy. it looked like your arm was like. I was like, is your arm broken? You're like, no, nah, it's just uh, like my triceps or something. <laughs> I was like, dude. Well, people, some people were telling me like, yeah, I guess if you hit your elbow really hard, it, it like releases this fluid. I forget the name of it, but it's they're like, like oh the yeah, bursa sack, right? If you hit, the yeah, bursa sack. yeah, yeah. 
they're like, oh, yeah, you just drain that. You're good. You could, you're could, you fine, bro. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know? but, no way, buddy. Oh, and the, man, and the, the cool thing is uh, the insurance. I did want to talk about a second of that is uh, the insurance is like, you know, amazing. I was so lucky. Luckily, I was sitting there on, on Thursday and I was like, let me sign up for this stupid insurance thing. Cause it takes like three minutes to do the insurance. So if anyone hasn't done that, definitely do with that. You just scan the back of your photo ID and, and then get the pushing buttons. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I have my own work insurance, you know, which is pretty good. I think it's an 80, 20. So I, they pay 80%. I pay 20%. Uh, so it would have came out to be like $4,000. I think I would have had to pay if I use my work insurance, which I pay a lot of money for that freaking insurance, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so the paintball insurance is pretty much, it's all covered. It's, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be all wow. covered. Not even a dollar out of my name. So. How much is the whole, if you don't mind me asking, how much is the whole procedure? I think it's in the range of like 50. To 18. Oh, I haven't okay. got the actual okay. amount. And the spot insurance covers up to 20 or 25? 25. 25. Damn, 25. yeah, that's good. Dude, even the little I busted my lip open in January. I wish that I would have had spot insurance. I've been I'm still getting bills. It's crazy. It was like twenty five hundred dollars yeah, yeah. out of pocket for a God, for a, for a stitch in my lip. Like it's unbelievable. I can't believe it. I pay five hundred dollars a month for health insurance. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the insurance here it, it it's insane in this country yeah not perfect well, huge <laughs> shout out to tom cole and the nxl for yeah. putting together yeah. the spot insurance thing i think it's amazing yeah. amazing yeah. i will i'll play that bunker at every event <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude i actually i have the levitating have uh the levitating jump oh, shot yeah. photo with that, that in, with that tight. bunker and yeah, uh that's it's really cool it's just great to see another company that's outside of paintball, obviously having yes. a bunker on the field and, and highlighting them. And then to have this, you know, obviously tragic incident that happened to you, Dalt, but to be able to have that coverage is really, I mean, yeah. that's amazing stuff. So hats off to Tommy and the NXL and everybody working hard there. Who is that? Sage, yeah. yeah. That's Rogan. I could Rogan. Like <laughs> He's like trying to get attention from me. <laughs> there we go. Dude, you got you got a beautiful family. Yeah, hopefully dude. you'll be hopefully you'll be seeing us uh, or seeing I know you'll be seeing the family, but hopefully I'll have the courage enough to go uh Saturday or Sunday for yep. young Theo's B day. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Hope to see you there. And obviously, you know, take care of yourself. But if you can make it out, that'd be awesome. We're gonna have some fun uh at yeah. main event. They're gonna be doing some laser tag, you know, playing some games, eating some pizza, being kids. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> when are you guys posting this video next or i don't know we haven't figured I mean, it out we were gonna wait and post it so for all the listeners we're recording this a day after recording our previous one because i'm gonna be gone all next week um so we weren't gonna be able to record one so i, I don't know maybe we should just release it tonight <laughs> i was gonna say if you're <laughs> if you're listening to this it's too late but no i'm going <laughs> tomorrow for surgery but uh, yeah so but yeah, right. yeah i don't know so, so. dang so you're having your surgery tomorrow. That's crazy. Did they kind of give you yeah, tomorrow a uh, a heads up yeah, on so, what the timeline's looking like for you? Yeah. So, and the reason is it's kind of rushed. Uh, I was talking to Marcelo about this, and he was giving me some good advice. But it's like it, it was kind of a shitty thing because the tendons, you know, they start to scar tissue and they start to like callus, and then it gets really complicated. So if you don't get those, you know, back in place fast, then it kind of causes other issues yeah so i was kind of yeah. you know i kind of had to decide quick and i saw a few doctors and it's hard because you know when you hurt yourself you're like where do i like what what do what where do i go like mm-hmm. it's like it's confusing you don't know so like originally like i was like i'll go to urgent care i don't know so i go to urgent care and they're like i'm like yeah i need to drain this stack of ball on my arm <laughs> she's like what are you talking about this is <laughs> swelling like you need to go to the hospital i was like okay so i eventually i just went to the er you know and it's just you're just better off if you don't know just go straight to the er early in the morning before it gets crazy and just start there especially if you have good insurance did you use the spot insurance at the er yeah yeah okay yeah because that's where i got host was the er that's why my whole thing the er yeah 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 damn so it's covering that and the procedure 
Yeah, it might get a little tight with the, the twenty five thousand, okay. but it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's in there, dude. Still, so, what a what a tremendous yeah. thing! I like. I need to sign yeah. up for mine, and thank you, Dalt, for for kind of explaining how to do it. I'm gonna go do it um, probably as soon as we hang yeah. up here. Yeah. Um, Dalt, yeah, we we've got some uh, some questions from the Discord. I'm gonna hop into one of them. Machine, uh, meme machine, Matt. You know, for the name meme machine, Matt, we haven't seen enough memes from you in the PTG Discord. <laughs> so like, you're really gonna have to step it up. But he goes, Dalton, who has been the most beneficial player to learn from on impact thus far? Or do you think you're that player provided your wealth of experience and knowledge? Well, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Because, <laughs> I, <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think uh, I, well, I try to be a helping hand, obviously. I've had a lot of experience, obviously, um, and won a lot. So I definitely try to be, I don't know, sometimes people don't listen to me or maybe I just don't know how to uh, coach or, <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's other people, obviously Dave um, knows the game very well. Uh, believe it or not, I, I first time playing with Matt Jackson fuzz. I mean, he, he's a mate, like reading his uh, mind paper IQ is kind of unique because one, he started in Texas and they didn't really have like professional players to learn from. Like he started literally from the bottom and uh, I don't know if you guys remember, well, you guys will, but some of the listeners like AC Dallas, like that team, like they, they were amazing for what oh, they yeah. had and what uh-huh. they started with. And they've all, they were right there knocking on the door, winning some events. And, and some of the things that he would tell me that they would do, it's like things I never heard of. Like they would, for instance, like let's say you're shooting at the snake lane, they would have a name for the lane. They would have names for the lane for the like hey you got to shoot the, the blue and like mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. they have names yeah. for lanes i'm like whoa that's right. crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> so details, like uh, dude. yeah like little details like that like they were pretty uh unique and just the way they came up so mm-hmm. he taught me a lot and it's very interesting you know awesome love that that's a great answer brother yeah you guys got a deep deep roster i mean nick's amazing to pick his brain as well yeah. and uh yeah there's just so many players on that team that have you a just really... need your you need your tinfoil hat anytime you're picking Nick's brain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shoot at the moon, it'll bounce off and it'll hit a guy. <laughs> okay, Nick. He's like, it's flat, it'll just go right down. <laughs> no, I love Nick. <laughs> He's the best. Uh, he is the best. All right, we got uh <laughs> we got Mark um Paris. Let's see. Actually, we're going to go with uh, Dorfster. Dalton, I want to know what you feel is the biggest hitch in the giddy up for Impact being able to get over the hump and get an event going your way. Uh, well, if I'm being brutally honest right now, I think our our low body like situations, maybe that's just like I said back to earlier, is we just haven't been playing with each other long enough. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, critiquing our losses over the last two tournaments like everything came down to a low body you know two on two three on three situation and I really feel we're probably the best of them uh, like playing five on five or five on four or four on five like we're like we're we thrive in those little moments but the low body which you know that's where you make all the bread dynasty Mm -hmm. will know like those three on three two on three that's where you win tournaments so right I think uh, that's one flaw in our game that we're working on and we just you know gotta keep yeah. practicing those s- s- scenarios and all that no it's really well said Dalt, because you're right that's that's yeah. where the trophies get handed out you know three on threes yeah. two on threes two on twos and having that that really good connectivity so it's something that like you said it takes time but i know you guys are all working hard everyone at the top is man yeah 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 we got chris Shear. One of our te- one of my teammates in the Discord. He wants to know, for Dalton, do you ever walk the field with your gun in your hand? <laughs> oh my god, I, I had to make fun of your boy because I was watching and he was literally walking the field with his gun. You know, 
and he's like <laughs> doing the snap shooting. And if you, it's funny to watch people walk the field because a lot of people obviously they do the hand thing. Do you guys do the hand thing where you like? Yeah, snake? yeah, I do the hand. Yeah, thing. I gotta film you guys. I should, I should start a new vlog channel yes. just filming people like what they look like when they. Well, that's <laughs> yeah, part of boy. dumb dumb paintball, dude. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's gonna be the. That's gonna be one of the. <laughs> Dude, that be gold. Spends the whole time jumping over bunkers. Like, yeah. know, Dude, it? you can't hate on that though. We used to literally play imaginary yeah. paintball, walking. No, yeah. <laughs> Still do, brother. Yeah, anytime I can throw a jab at you know yeah. the, the opponent, I'll try to jab him. That's <laughs> Dude, I'm still running around on the field prior to playing, like bunkering my teammates and <laughs> just having fun. <laughs> Dude, it's the best. It's Who the best. cares? Live it up. Yeah. <laughs> Live it up. Yeah. All right, Dalt. We got uh, – I had a good one here. Dalton, did your injury limit on how you wanted to play the field? Obviously, I think, you know, I can answer that one. But um, how did you come yeah. up with your signature pod kick, Selly? Oh, shoot. I have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea. It was like – I think I – it was funny. I just watched Marcelo. He, had, he was dumping a pod. I could tell. He he like he, he didn't know what to do with the pod and he was he didn't want to fill in his loader because then he would have to dump it out later. So he's like, Well, I already have it open, so I will just dump it right here. Is that what were you going? Is that what you're doing or what? Hundred percent because I was about to load and then I didn't and I was like, This is my sig Sally. I'm gonna pull one out for the homies, you know? Yeah, but yeah, that's what that was cool, was like pouring out the homies. But yeah, yeah. I, it was one of those situations where I had a pod in my hand and I was like, I didn't and I was caught in between so i'm like i'm just gonna punt this thing <laughs> so i started punt, punting them <laughs> dude uh, i love just it break, breaking other teams pods real nice yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah he doesn't yeah he he only picks up the enemy pod yeah. and punts it. Yeah. you know yeah, yeah. i go and just good strategy smashing. i also yeah. poured the paint out literally in the snake crawl zone and i knew we were switching sides so we were gonna oh, be on that that's Jeez. good, dude. It was the Jeez. snake landing zone. And then I was like, we're on the other <laughs> side next point. Good luck. He hit on his knee. <laughs> good luck. Oh, yeah. man. Genius. Genius. Dude, that is really fun. All right. <clears throat> CM Harry. Dalton, what is different with the relationship that you have with the Dynasty players now versus when you're on the team? Also, are there any negative effects from you switching from AC Dallas to Impact and your friendship with those players that were affected in that trade. So I guess you want uh, to know all the juice. Yeah, all the dirt. <laughs> uh, the dynasty, you know, n- nothing. Obviously, there we're opponents now, so there's obviously going to be a little bit of a, uh, you know, the the rivalry or the you know how it is. You know, you yeah. just can't yeah. be total um, outside of paintball. No, there's zero percent. You know hatred or anything i text those guys i get their opinion still to this day i ask them for elderly or much elderly <laughs> brother advice you now i talk to you so no there's it's you know same as usual it's just wearing a different jersey totally. and then with the other guys i mean i guess it, i guess i could say it's a little weird obviously uh they were counting on me going over there and things changed and so like I kind of I think I kind of feel awkward as far as like like some of them will come and say hi to me and talk to me and I I kind of think maybe too much of it and I'm like kind of awkward and like oh they probably don't like me I should just ignore them but they're trying to be cool so it's kind of like a weird thing but yeah. I think I'm looking too much into it so I think there's no bad blood at least no nothing has been said or you know I don't I haven't felt any negative towards yeah. that camp. Yeah, they're not shooting shots at you, you know what I'm saying? And and yeah. I'm sure that, you know, obviously they would have greatly appreciated having you on the squad. You're one of the best players in the world, undoubtedly. Um, but they got to, you know, any real friend is going to support you and and be there to, if, if they say they're riding with you the way that they say they are, then they're going to support you no matter yeah. no matter what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's all there is. Your, your true friends come out. Yep. That's yep. it. 100 yeah buddy well damn ty i don't know if you have any other questions that was the last one for me yeah i did uh i did have one more thank you to everybody for for getting these questions in here there is let's see oh we got we got papa sash uh dalton who are the dum-dums on impact 
And who are the smart smart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, the dum dum. Okay, we'll start with the Frenchie. We got Axel. <laughs> he's, Axel is for sure dum dum. Dum dum for sure. He's wild boy. He's, that kid's so athletic, man. And yeah. He's so young, which is crazy because I feel like I've been playing against him forever. I mean, he's How not he? young, young, but he's like twenty-seven. He's under thirty. Yeah. He's, nice. Which just seems young. Yeah. Because then when we were, you know, ten years ago when we were playing against him, he must have been a baby, baby. Yeah. He might, be a little, he might be 28 or 29, but yeah, he's, he's yeah. definitely under 30. Yeah, he's a stud. Um, yeah, he's definitely one of the dumb dumb. Um, oh, uh, but Nick, yeah. <laughs> Nick's a smart, smart, I guess. But uh, Zupa, he's a def- definitely dumb dumb, but he's also a smart, smart because he's, he's an engineer by trade. So he's he definitely has that brain where he's hardwired a little different, which yeah. makes him probably – the dum dum because I think you know dum dums are really good at math and they're like they can see shapes well you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> can see shapes well. <laughs> Dude, I feel like the engineering mind is perfect for paintball. I didn't know that he had an engineering background, but it is. It's such you have to build it. You know what I mean? Like that's been a, a mantra that of mine recently is you got to build it. This shit ain't gonna build itself. You want something? Go yeah. build it. And, and, you know, whether it's your shots off the break or the, the overall field of vision of what's going on on the field, you know, build it. What are you going to do? You got to build that. Yeah. Yep. And we got the like squad. The <laughs> yeah, we got see, the I, young. I, think, uh, I don't think you guys have many dum-dums. That's the thing. I think it's like just Axel. Yeah. Maybe yeah, JC. <laughs> JC, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Not really. He's like a. Yeah, I feel like you don't have any dum dums, dude. Well, I, in my no, eyes, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't. Like yeah, the dum dums are just like the wild, crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that's like not yeah. that they're actually yeah. dumb. You know, it's right, like right, it's, right. It's just a more except of a in Dalton's thing. case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll play with one arm. They'll they'll chop their fingers off. They'll... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dynasty dum dums are actually dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, nah, yeah way to go uh mikey though uh dude he played great he came dude. in stunning so proud of the guy for him. yeah so yeah. happy for him and it's been a struggle you know he's like gotten less and less play time he had that big you know event in 2021 world cup i think it was or was it 2020 world cup where he was like 20 really well 2020 yeah okay, 2020. 2020 he was playing phenomenal and then 2021 he had a few good tournaments like you know, he's stringing some tournaments together where it was like, okay, Mikey's, he's coming, you know? And yeah. then, you know, we picked up Archie and it kind of, that side just kind of got taken from anyone else right. on the team. And uh, 2022 was really tough for him. He didn't get a lot of play time. And on any other team, pretty much he, he would have. And, um, yeah. you know, he kept a great attitude and has worked hard and waited for his opportunity. And as soon as his name got called this last weekend, I mean, he came in and, and played phenomenal for us. He won some yeah. big moments. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's like layout dependent because he plays each layout pretty good. And but it's just layout dependent for Archie kind of style because if it's a slow snake and, and it's like you know you're gonna yeah. get the arch arch right. fest. Right. So right. it's it's hard to, <laughs> for anyone to do totally. better than that, really. So totally, mm-hmm. it's you know but. <clears throat> definitely yeah, agree, brother. It's a leap. Hey, Dalty, also want to pick your brain on uh, Austin Notorious just picked up Harris Hussein. Oh yeah, on, on the move. I love it. I love it because, you know, obviously he was playing with the Russians and unfortunately for him, he wasn't getting a lot of play time just because he's new and he, you know, I would have did the same thing. I, to be honest, he's, he's playing this game for fun. He wants to play. If I was in his shoes, I would probably do the same thing. He's, he's in his prime of his career. He's a great player. Um, and he just wasn't getting the spins, not because of his talent, but just because of his time on that team. And they have, they have a core group of guys, so you know it just was not the right move. And obviously, he saw the fit, so he had to jump quick. You know, sometimes you know you might get extra flack for jumping in the middle of the season, but if it's if it's your time at the end, it's you know just just rip the bandaid. I see it, so I, I think it was a good move. And it helps Austin bolsters their roster up with a, another really great talent. Yeah, dude, they get 
total respect for me. I, yeah, they came out of nowhere. And shout out to those guys <laughs> because, you know, they're just, they play each field the right way somehow. Like, I don't know how they, they have like, you know, someone in their yeah. corner that sees how to play the field every time. I'm just going to start going to the layouts and watch how they play the layout and just do that because they, <laughs> they just play it right. <laughs> um, are you talking about the right team, Dalton? Yeah, notorious. You guys beat them. Okay. Yeah, they've right? only been in, they've only been in the, in the league for two events. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know they oh, played. Okay. Uh, All right. They. Yeah, I know. Both events. About. Uh, Both got events. It. They Bell. played good. They got. got they it. got big body Bell on the team. Yeah, got it. Right? Got it. I, I thought maybe you were thinking New Orleans Hurricanes because they have like talk about a new team that has earned respect over the last year or two. And to me, I look at them and I'm always like, man, it just seems like they're playing the field right and well. Like, who's oh, doing that? Oh, you know what? You're right. I I missed that. Did you really? I don't know. <laughs> so wait, it's the Hurricanes and what's the other one? Austin Notorious. Notorious. But, but Notorious okay. has only I been... Was thinking, I was thinking uh, Hurricanes. <laughs> Marcelo knew but it. Notorious. I love wait, you, dude. <laughs> who did you guys beat? <laughs> Uh, we beat the Hurricanes on Sunday, but we played Notorious in the prelims. I was, I was right either way, so it yeah. sounded like I was right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Damn, dog. I, They're I was both. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're but bo- no, no, no. Yeah. I know. Now I know. I don't know why. You know, dumb, dumb, a uh, little hiccup, but <laughs> they're a good team, too. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, send it. Just send it. Oh, I love you, Dalt. Dude, I know you so well. <laughs> So you did. You called. Yeah, you had to call me out. Just let me live for a second. <laughs> you know I can't do that. <laughs> oh, They're playing good though, man. Um, both of them. Both they of are. Those they quads are. are playing yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Harris it's is going to help any team. He would help our team. Dude, pick him up. Any team. He would help Dynasty. Pick, sure. pick, pick, him, pick him up. <laughs> pick him up. Dude, we uh, missed out. We were trying to get him. He's he's too much. He's just like he wouldn't even just take a look at us. He wouldn't even take a look yeah, at us. Yeah, he wanted he yeah. wanted extra Nikes. You can he's like I, I need he's a, a man. shoe deal. Yeah. He's uh he's definitely eccentric and uh you know he gets the job done. I don't know, like sometimes you watch it and you're like, I don't know how the hell he just did this, but he did it. You know, and and at the end of the day, if they get it done, they get it done. So that's what you need. Yeah, I mean, what? That's a good question for you guys. I mean, what do you think it takes? Because you know how it is, like practice. You know, we always talk about it, Marcelo. There's practice players. There's, I always used to say that, like, just do it at the event. That's all I care totally. about. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. care how many times you mess up. Just do it at the event. And to take it a step further, like on Sunday, and then later Sunday, totally. it's like it's there's so many levels to it. Like, what do you think it is like that just gets people that play the way they do at the events and just compared to practice? And it's like, what is that switch? That's a really interesting thing that we've never really dove too far into, but there's so much meat on the bone there because, you know, there are certain individuals who just stunt feast at practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, God damn, that might be the best player I ever seen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see, you see these moves they're making out here? And then at the tournament, <laughs> it's just like it's not the same. I don't know if it's the paint, if it's the setting, if it's, you know, I don't know what it is. But the only thing that matters is that you get that shit done at the tournament, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's I'll, curious. All that matters. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you what I, I, you know, I've actually thought about this quite a bit because it's a frustrating thing as well. And as a coach, it's a frustrating thing when you see players, you know, these divisional teams that I coach have these amazing practices and then not be able to put it together in the events. I think often it's that the uh, adult, are you going through a wind tunnel right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where are you? He's, he's driving the golf cart through, the, through a wind tunnel. No, I'm not. <laughs> I was. I was trying to see if my leg still works. <laughs> Those nah, things are good, good, good. Um, <laughs> But I think it's a mix of, you know, a quite a few things. And some of the main things, I think often players aren't totally honest with themselves if they get bounced. If it's like a light bounce and they just keep playing through it. Well, that's a death. In, the, in a tournament, mm. it's likely an elimination. 
um, you made a mistake and, and, and often they don't even address it or fix it or acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the fact of when players are really pushing the limit at practice. I know for me as a shooter, when we have practice paint that is not as accurate as tournament ah. paint, forget the bounciness. I'm talking about the straightness. And me as a shooter who I rely on a really accurate paintball, sometimes at practice, it's a little bit off. That's a big deal for someone like me. So if an opponent team's attacker is getting into the 50 snake and I see their pack crawling around in the tournament, I hit that shot in practice. I don't, you know, but I see it. And, you know, that player is not now, you know, they're, they're going through that point without being penalized for exposing their pack. And so, you know, they get to the 50, yeah. they get a couple kills and it's like, well, what the hell? Like, is that actually how it's going to be? Um, or sometimes there's, there's gaps like to shoot the interior bunkers where you have to be literally like yeah. within an inch or two to, to mm -hmm. connect on the shot, uh, with tournament paint, you can connect on that shot in practice. You don't, if your first ball curves half a foot, you miss the shot. Yeah. So there's these things that I don't think we're realistic with, but if you can approach the field and look at it, like, I know what it's going to be like at the tournament. And that shot is definitely there. It maybe it's a little weird that we haven't gotten shot once the whole time going to this spot, you know, or like we're yeah. just freely getting into the snake and going down to the 50. I've never been to a field where that's the case, you know, maybe Chicago. Yeah, right. it. So like, you know, I think the paint plays a big role and not just the bounciness, the, the accurate uh, accuracy of it. I think that's huge. Again, for yeah. me, I know Tyler's this kind of player, right? Uh, Dalton, I don't really ever know what you're shooting at out there. You just kind of wait till you have their backs. <laughs> so I don't think accuracy matters for you because in practice you play amazing and in tournaments you play amazing. I think it's like <laughs> you, you just wait till you get behind him and shoot him so it's a little easier. But for, I only move. For, for us, you know, it's like, yeah, I might only have a split window to shoot somebody. So if, if things aren't completely dialed in and accurate, then I miss the shot. And then, you know, it's frustrating, but it's like, look, I know I'm going to hit that at the tournament. Then it's a whole nother ball game when you go to the tournament because, yeah, you need to be able to excel in those situations, but it becomes a lot more mental as well. You have to have the composure yeah. and not make the game bigger than it is. Like, I yeah. personally have a very tough time these days when I was younger is different, but these days it's so hard for me to get motivated to have a good practice. Like I care yeah. about learning and practice. So sometimes I'll see a move and I'm like, ah, I'm not really going to take it. And then I get shot and it's frustrating, but I'm like, at least I know like that move was available. So put it in the checkbox. You know, it's like, I know that I know that it's there. And the whole point of this practice is to learn for the tournament. Um, and then at the tournament, like the more people, the better, the more excited I am, you know, like that, that mm -hmm. just is just fuel period. So um, I think you need to be able to tap into that and use that as fuel and not be afraid of like making a mistake. Cause so many people are watching, you know, it's the opposite. Yeah. It's the opposite of that. Do you guys feel, I feel like sometimes at practice, like the communication is like, you get, obviously as you learn the field it gets better and better and like the communication and practice like it's always there you're, you're having these good conversations like you know i got this guy you got that guy and you know whatever it is yeah. and some reason at the tournament i know it's not you guys because you guys are great communicators but like some of my teammates in the past or even me i struggle like for some reason maybe it's the added pressure of being at the event i think it is and you you start to like not communicate you know like hey like yeah, like you like if you go and watch the first paintball game, uh, the first games on Friday morning, like yeah. oh it, yeah, the communication is so different between totally. Friday morning and Sunday afternoon. It's kind of weird. Totally. I remember there was a in the first point, or I think it was like the second or third point on Friday, our first match. Like uh, I think little B died behind me, so I didn't have a back guy, and the closest guy to me was like you know kind of far, and I it was Nick, and I and I'm yelling at him. And he looked at me and we looked at each other like, oh, shoot, we could still talk. Like, even though we're not, <laughs> you know, we're still like not right next to each other. Like, we could, yeah. we could still hear each other. It was like a weird thing. And then we're like, okay, this, this, and this. I'm like, okay, that, yeah. that, and that. So it was like, it was like a, a little click for me. I'm like, oh, oh, I think it's just those added nerves in those first few points where you're like, okay, yeah, sure. I got it. You're so focused on like just doing your job and doing what you do well. You forget about your teammates, you know? Dude, yeah. you're so right. I know that a few seasons ago, I purposefully decided to work on that because I noticed communication is one of the biggest parts of my game. But I noticed as the event went on and especially on Sundays, like I would kind of freeze up and not be communicating as fluidly. You know, I'm still getting out information, but like a little hesitant in joysticking a little, you know, like 
I would go kind of quiet. And sometimes it's because you're a little bit tired as well. Communicating is really difficult out there uh, to do mm -hmm. just consistently to be yelling. Um, but it's a mental thing for sure. And I realized that a few, a few seasons back and it's like, okay, you just got to like take a deep breath and make sure that in those big moments, that's when you really need to be connecting and, and communicating the most. But it took a conscious, uh, effort to, to get better at that. You're absolutely right. Dalton, like when the moment gets a little bit bigger and now I see it all the time in the teams that I coach in our practices, it's like, you guys are communicating like dynasty. And then in the tournament, you guys are communicating, uh, like, you've never played a tournament together before, you know, it's crazy. So, yeah, yeah. so it's, you know, to me, I'm like, it has to be the pressure, you know, it's the, the adrenaline's going, you're just a little more tunnel yeah. vision and focused on like, don't die. And like what you're doing, you got to take a deep breath. Yeah. And imagine yeah. if, if that's happening on the pro fields, imagine what's oh, yeah. happening at the divisional fields, you know, it, it's yeah. just oh yeah, monumental, the gaps in communication, but Dalton, like you said, man, there's nothing more important than, making the effort and that's really what we want to see right we want to see effort we want to see that you're yeah. trying to do the right thing and reach out to your player that's across the field because that says something not only to that player it says something to everybody watching from the sidelines and you're going to be able to make connections and be able to win those points if you do not do that you will not win those points i mean just point blank because the other team that is doing that is going to run you down once they understand exactly what's going on Hundred percent. Get out there and talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, damn, Dalt. We uh, know you got the family over there. Uh, we went way longer than I think you expected. Definitely appreciate the time. Um, yeah, brother. Good luck with the surgery yeah, in the morning, did. dude. We definitely want to yeah, hear how you're doing, and and uh, just always a pleasure to have you on. You've got some of the greatest insight out of you know any of the guests, any of the players. Just all the experience <laughs> and the way that you, uh, you know, word things. It's very valuable for everybody. So appreciate you, brother. Love you guys. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, I, I got a, a positive feeling about all this and I think uh, everything's going to be all right. Dude, there you go, man. 100% well, it is. Every, yeah. Everybody's sending you the good vibes. Do you know how long like your recovery process is going to be? I'm sure yeah. you're, Probably not going to be able to make the mid Atlantic, I would imagine. Yeah. So it's four months. So the September ish. So maybe I might be able to make that uh, middle tournament. But oh, yeah. It'll, it'll You're going to be there, dude. We'll, yeah. Well, yeah, obviously, I'll I'll, you know, <laughs> don't, don't rush it, but um, just like, yeah. you know, keep the good positive thoughts going too. Cause that's honestly the most difficult thing is when you go through this. Just uh, like you said, if you need anything, we're all here for you. Tap in, message yeah, us, man. say some jokes, yeah. say some funny shit, and we'll all laugh together. <laughs> and and uh, we'll watch you heal up and, and be back out on the field soon, man. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for uh, everything, man. Course, you guys brother. are my Dude, best got friends you, dog. Like, through and through, for sure, 100%. Love you guys. Oh, we love oh, you yeah, too, brother. Love you too, brother. You'd have made all it right, easy, boy. right? All right. Later, all guys. Right. Good night. Later, brother. Dolly. Oh man, Dolly, dude, it's one of a kind. What a savage, I love bro. Him. He played with the arm like that. I could not believe my eyes when he walked up to me after that that match. I, I know, and not just like I mean, he like won the point for impact. It was yeah. impressive, dude. It was yeah, impressive. You know, it's like that's Heart. why you pay Dalton. Heart, yep. dedication, and just the ability to do to do it to be in that yeah. spot in overtime yeah. against damage, against and damage. You know, and do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, Dalton is one of the most clutch players uh, of, yeah. you know, all time. Like, I've watched him just pull out such amazing <laughs> moments over and over and over. Yep, he's he's a lord yeah. at that. And his mindset, I mean, the fact that he was saying, you know, obviously, like he said, it's a little Willing bit of a dark thought. There, yeah. that, that's how much he wants it. And, and if you're stepping into that net and you don't want it that much, just think about that. There's someone out there that does want it that much. So turn those gears up. Straight up, dude. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Ty, yeah. real quick before we go, uh, I do want to share with everybody a sweet yeah. giveaway that we are doing here. If you go on transfuseusa.com and make a purchase of any of their products, you could get the Transcend, uh, which is their new tropic. This is phenomenal. Every single Sunday, this is what I go to battle with on the paintball field. Period. Um, and Transfuse the 
mind and body hydration formula. This I take every single day because it's just really good. It has a ton of brain boosting vitamins, all the electrolytes you're going to need to stay healthy and sharp. Um, this particular flavor is the lemonade sweet tea. Uh, this one is, is dynamite. Fire. But if you make a, a, a purchase and use code play the game, not only do you get a significant discount, but in the month of May, you will be entered to win one of my personal dynasty pinstripe jerseys check out the youtube as well he's got it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. check out the youtube we're showing everybody we're, sh we're showing it off right now so at the end of the month you know we'll go through and i'll put all the names on a wheel we'll spin the wheel good old-fashioned uh ptg style and uh yeah one yeah. lucky winner is going to get this jersey signed autographed and you guys are going to be feeling better than ever as well because uh this stuff is truly amazing honestly has been just a, a staple since 2020 world cup this stuff has been a staple in yeah. our gear bags in our uh preparation in everything we do you know um i don't like to take pre-workouts or you know stuff with any sort of stimulation that frequently um, but on days where I don't want to take a whole lot, I'll even take like just a half a scoop of this. And it's just like a nice little brain booster. You know, it's, it's really, really it dynamite. And then the hydration is. again is just mandatory. Yeah, it's a staple every single day, transfuse. And then when yeah. you're playing paintball, that transcend will get you yeah. popping. And while we're doing 100%. plugs, I do got to say, if your team is looking to get fitted and looking proper, have a nice team design, head over to hcaramy.com slash custom and use code PTG. And you'll get 50% off of your design fee for getting your team all styled out in HK gear. And there's no order uh, minimum quantities. So you can just do a couple pieces or, you know, whatever you want. But um, it would really help out our show and help HK Army and just show love for the PTG fam. If, uh, if you head over there and get your team fitted with some HK Army gear. And we cannot thank every single one of you who tunes into the show week in, week out you know, nonstop showing love on the socials, messaging us and on us on this journey with us, you know, as we move towards episode 200, we're having a lot of fun and we'll keep the good times rolling with y'all. Hell yeah, brother. Ty, thank you so much. Listeners, thank you so much. And uh, thank you much. we want to be, let's showcase this uh, semi-pro uh, rivalry and all the yeah. talent that's coming through because it's exciting right now. Paintball's exciting, brother. It is. Heck yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you right. soon. See Peace. You soon. Peace. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and rocking with us. As always, if you enjoyed the show, please show support. You can do that in so many ways. The free ways, you can just go to YouTube, leave comments, go to your podcast apps, whether it's Spotify or Apple Podcasts, leave comments, leave reviews. Please help us out. That does get us shown to more people, more people that might not even know what paintball is. So let's help grow the sport. Give them the exposure to this show and hopefully we'll get some more people out playing paintball now if you would like a more direct way to support the show you can head over to ptgpaintball.com click the patreon link and become a member now if you do become a member you get amazing exclusive access to the discord the ptg discord is amazing we do all sorts of giveaways it's a beautiful community we have in there tons of learning opportunities and uh, really a way for you to uh, meet some new friends in the game and connect with a lot of the pros um, as always our website is brought to you by rusty glaze Concert Pursuit. If you need a website, Rusty's your guy. It just really simplifies everything and will do a phenomenal job. Our show sponsors, thank you so much to Transfuse, BioCell, HK Army, Lone Wolf, and Hormesis. Please use code play the game at checkout. Uh, and that's, uh, I guess, another great way to support the show. Support the sponsors, and in turn, that is supporting the show. Buy yourself something nice. You never know what it might be. Whatever it is, whatever you want, go get it. All right, everybody, as always, we will see you very soon. Peace.